What's up beautiful people? Today we're going to be checking out another video that reflects the high cost of living in Canada. So this one is titled Confident Citizen Nails Problem Dead On Property Tax Skyrocketing. Well, I'm curious to see this one, so let's get to it. Like, when's this gonna stop it? If we're gonna have higher property taxes from this point on, one, I need to hear about it, right? Because it just can't sustain it. And two, then you guys have to do more. When you're ready, please go ahead. You'll have five minutes. Great. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and uh, council members. I'm here to speak to the significant property tax increase in 2023. Hmm. Before I begin, I want to thank each of you and your staff for your service. I'm speaking today to express the frustration of many residents, Sorry. and I ask you to change the path that you are on. At the conclusion of my presentation, I'd like to enter a memo summarizing these concerns and that is supported by 51 other residents in my community. My name is Mr. Glass and this is my wife, Carmel. We've been residents of Ajax since 1996 and since then we've seen the population of Ajax more than double from 64,000 to almost 130,000. Until recently, this growth has been managed in an effective and responsible manner when compared against the annual increase in property taxes. Frankly, this year's increase of 6.63% was unacceptable and cannot be justified by inflation alone because the well, trend increased by how much property taxes. Frankly, this year's increase of 6.63% was unacceptable hmm. and cannot be justified by inflation alone because the trend over the past five years shows clearly that taxes have been rising and this is unsustainable. I do not wish to be critical of this council or regional chair, John Henry, who I've also spoken to, but in reviewing my own property taxes, which I keep records of since 2011, there are clear differences in the property tax rates between the current administration and the prior one. Specifically, the previous AJAC council and regional chair leadership between 2011 and 2018, seven years, saw my, my wife and I's taxes go up an average of 2.33%. Since the election of your administration in 2018 and your re-election this past fall, my average property taxes have increased an average of 3.51% over those five years, seven, five years. 3.51 versus 2.3 per year is a considerable difference and this trend can't continue because it's 50% higher than what we were paying before. As someone who votes and stays abreast of what's happening in the community, here are my observations. I don't like to be critical, but I'm just expressing my point of view. Early in right. 2019, Mayor and Council said the taxes would go up that year, higher than normal to pay for desperately needed service improvements that the previous administration hadn't invested in. It was also stated that more business would be coming to Ajax and that their addition to our community would help return taxes to normal levels because a new tax revenue stream would come to the town. I commend you all for the addition of businesses like Amazon, Gordon Foods, and H&M, but as my numbers earlier stated, they have not helped normalize my property taxes. <laughs> well, they've, gone up. they've only gone from 2.33% to 3.51%, and this year's 6.61% is very troubling. Mm -hmm. With respect to the services our taxes pay for, many residents like me and those in our community have feel that it has declined. Garbage and yard waste is frequently late or missed entirely. Snow Even with the high tax rates. Removal services have also declined, and many in our street, in particular, saw damages to their property this past winter. Lawns and garden beds in the public spaces are frequently poorly maintained, or not at all. My point is that services have declined, and they do not justify the higher taxes that we've been paying. So what needs to be done? We are calling on you, our elected leaders, and those in Durham region to return property taxes at least to the historical 2.5% average, and two, to be more disciplined managing property tax revenue with a focus on essential services. I'd like to cite a recent example of poor fiscal management. In March 2023, month or two after you approved the recent tax increase, Council approved an $80,000 Ajax sign like the one in Nathan Phillips Square. Such an allocation of town funds when residents are struggling, literally struggling, higher food, higher mortgage, everything else is unacceptable and we call on this project to be scrapped immediately. 
I understand that by 2031, seven years from now, the town will be adding between 17 and 32,000 new route units or 50,000 more residents. Mm -hmm. Given this anticipated growth, it's imperative that council and the region manage our taxes back to the 2.5% norm. As my numbers showed, previous administrations managed rapid population during their tenor in a manner that didn't, leave, didn't overly burden the existing taxpayers and we call on you to follow their example. Mm -hmm. Basically saying, go and ask them how they did it. This will demand stronger fiscal management, decision making, sacrifice. Government leaders never do that for some reason. It's like when they come into power, they start a whole new agenda, just do their own thing. You know, ask your predecessors how they did some things. Prices will need to be made and you will need to explain your decisions to the community. Use your Facebook mediums for things more than just feel good things and so on. Remember the compounding effect of even a 2.5% annual tax increase from here on in and its dollar value, it dollar value will have a heavy burden on many residents in Ajax. Bottom right. line, this 6.63% property tax increase was unacceptable and a change back to the norm must occur. I thank you for your attention and I wish to submit these documents. Mm -hmm. That was good. So from what he mentioned, it seemed they are taking the property taxes to build new homes because of the um, migration rate into the society. Is that justifiable? I don't, I don't know. Let me know what you think about that. Thank you for your delegation. Before I open it up to questions, I'll try and address some of the some of the questions that you asked. Yes, for please. Your delegation. I, I took some notes. I wasn't texting. I was <laughs> writing no some worries. of these things down. And this is in no way any type of excuse. I'm just trying to explain to you some of the pressures that we are under as a council. So, and also as someone that was around during the years that you mentioned from 2011 on the two point somethings, I'll I'll try and address that without being too critical of of um, what went on during that time, but I will suggest that we, the past councils have never had to deal with things like COVID, with the incredible inflation. I don't know what CPI ended up being this year. We don't use CPI, we use MPI because we don't use that basket of goods, but it's considerable. We all know how much we paid for, for fuel, for everything else. And part of with COVID is, is labor shortages, um, uh, supply chain issues, difficulty in even getting staff to do some of our services. So I'll try and work those in, in my answer. In this past last term of council, we underwent a number of plans and initiatives. We did a fire master plan update. The last fire master plan was done, I think in 2011. It was not mm -hmm. implemented. We've had considerable growth back in 2009. I think when we built the new fire hall and hired the last round of firefighters, we were told we would not need to hire any more firefighters. That was the last time. We've had so much growth now in order to maintain that service level. We it's had to reach more. out and hire another 20 firefighters last year. There's a million dollars. But you hire them partway through the year, so that gets annualized. So by hiring 20 firefighters last year, we are basically starting it, correct me if I'm wrong, about 2% this year because you need to carry on the second half of that. So. When we started our budget this year, we started at about 4%, I think. I'm looking for a nod somewhere around there, based on decisions that were made in the past. So I'm just, again, just trying to explain this and we can get the questions in a second. We also did our stormwater master plan. We have somewhere in the neighborhood, I think 29 or something stormwater ponds that could be higher. When these things were built, nobody ever thought of what the maintenance was going to cost to maintain them. They get full of sediment. They cost between two hundred fifty to three hundred fifty thousand dollars each to maintain them. They're all coming due now, and we had to do a stormwater management plan. And one of the things we found was we have a number of exempt tax exempt properties, so places of worship, government buildings, things like that that don't pay taxes, but they still produce stormwater. So we needed to come up with a way to have them pay their fair share because if they don't our cost is still the same and we would have to add on more than the $48, $48 a year that was added on to every tax bill for the stormwater charge. So we developed this stormwater levy which you'll see on your tax bill as a separate charge one time $48 
And then all the commercial properties that aren't currently paying taxes now get that levy and they're paying their own share because these stormwater, we are in a climate change emergency. We have global warming. We have the, you know, the 50 year storm twice every five years. Stormwater is a big deal now and erosion and we need to deal with it. And this is the way we've dealt with it. We're not the only ones. I think there's 12 other municipalities in the province right now that have had to do that. And that's just the start. They're all going to have to do it. I think Burlington this year is a 12% tax increase, for instance. Uh, there's, there's a lot of others. We also were directed by the province through COVID to do an asset management plan. This asset management plan, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, and I'll, I'll ask staff this after, means in order to maintain our current inventory of roads, bridges, buildings, community centers, everything else is, I don't even remember what the number is, but we included a 2% increase just for the asset management plan because our capital budget all of our projects, if you look at our GDC report. So all this increment, is it going to be forever or it's just a one time thing? Maybe 2023 is going to be at 6%, then back at 2024, it goes back down to 2.5%. Yeah, I commend him for, you know, at least knowing his um, his numbers, the, the mayor, I mean. Report from last Monday, we had two awards of tenders for road and the parking lot, something else. Our capital projects, because of things I've already outlined, um, supply chain and the rest, are coming in nearly double what we, what we estimated five years ago when we did the five-year capital forecast. So what we're having to pay today is almost double what we've, what we've estimated for, and we had to add a 2% asset management just to go in to prop up our capital budget. So those are just a couple of things I picked up from from your delegation you talk about declining service i agree the yard waste was was a bit of a gong show last year again miller waste just couldn't get drivers they couldn't get people to come out and pick them up it was a delay they ran shifts on saturdays they got it done the ajax sign uh, we received i think 400 and something thousand dollars in government grants for tourism and one of the things that we did was that sign that was a two hundred and ninety thousand dollar project i think and i'm going from memory and our, our piece is 80,000. So we're able to leverage tax dollars. We get a, almost a $300,000 asset for 80 grand. To me, and again, that's, I'm not gonna, you don't like it. I think it's, it's going to be a, a good addition. So those are just my comments quickly. And I, I can't get into a bit, debate with you. Go ahead with one. I, 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 I appreciate, as I said off the start, I think what in times of real mm -hmm. tough, you know, there are going to be pressures, and I understand you're dealing with those. But I think we need to prioritize, really strictly prioritize what is essential, as I said in my presentation. I like the fact that we're giving grants to, I saw two today on the Ajax site, 25,000 here, 25,000 there, the $80,000 sign. I think, you know, in times of plenty, and if we're paying a 2.5% or a 3.5%, and there's funds available for that, but when you're passing on a 6.6% increase, and I don't know what it's going to be next year with this higher uh, floor with my taxes. You know, it's $8,200 in five years if the 3.5% trend hmm. continues, I'm gonna be bucking up against 10 grand. And like, when's this gonna stop it? Not alone, let alone a 6.5 if it keeps up at this pace. So if we're gonna have higher property taxes, from this point on, one, I need to hear about it, right? Because it just can't sustain it. And two, then you guys have to do more in terms of saying, this is a want and this is a need. And so if you don't pay your property taxes, let's say you don't have money to pay, what happens in that situation? Do they take your house or do they send you to jail? I'd like to know. And Absolutely. we need to focus on needs for the residents of Ajax, municipal needs not feel good things and all of these other things, as much as they're great and they build a community, you're going to destroy the very community you're trying to build and mm -hmm. help serve. I'm telling you. I'm not disagreeing with you. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'll, I'll address that, then we'll open it up to questions. We are addressing the needs. These are very trying times. Um, if you, we have a full open transparent budget process. It starts in the fall. We have on our website, the budget builder or 
is that still what we call it? Well, anyway, the, look for input from the public on different budget items, that type I of thing. It. I mean, please give us your feedback. That is the time. Our budget meeting is open and public. And I invite you I to like attend that. And, and make a delegation and, and bring forward some issues, review the budget. If you see things, that is the time. Now the budget has already been passed. And just, just to cap, it's a six point something total, but the Ajax portion is only 3% of that. So just that's- But we that's have council, we, regional councils here who sit on the group as well, who can bring these same points and the same type of diligence I think needs to be carried forward to there. That's my point why I, yep. I spoke to John Henry and I, I'm asking Councillor Cofford and Councillor Lee to take that forward as well. And dice, but yeah. <laughs> so uh, absolutely, I, I hear what you're saying and I can tell you, and as, as an, uh, a practicing accountant in the past, not anymore, but I do understand budgets. I do look at very closely. If you do come to these meetings, you'll hear me ask a lot of very pointed questions, make some amendments, move some things around, as well as the rest of council. We do do our very best, mm -hmm. but it is a challenge. And that's all I just tried to explain to you was some of the challenges that we have, which is the same as what all regular homeowners also have. Everybody has seen managing your home, the increases in everything, whether- it's Do the mayors have to pay these property taxes too? Because they should also feel it to understand. Be the the electricity that you're using or whether it be the gas for your car or everything has gone up. Insurance, for instance, mm -hmm. interest rates have gone crazy. Interest rates alone account for a considerable amount. Uh, like people who have to renew their mortgages are going to all of a sudden be realizing how high the next one is. We have the same thing on debt that we People pay. are defaulting now. A motion coming late or a report coming later on about looking at different ways to manage our capital budget and looking at potentially debenturing things like fire trucks that have a 15 year useful life rather than buying them cash because we need to figure out ways to make our capital reserves move forward. We brought in an investment strategy. We were one of the first municipalities in the region to have an investment strategy to get our capital, to get our reserves working better for us so we don't have to go back to the taxpayer. So I do hear what you're saying and I do take it very seriously and I did answer your questions that you reached out to me and I think our staff uh, and answered your questions as well. I apologize that you weren't on the list right away. I think the thought was that we had answered your questions and you were satisfied, but anyway, you're here and I did bump you up with all the other presentations. So, um, and I did see your comment online. So I didn't put you 14th, <laughs> I did put your fifth and I was gonna do that anyway. <laughs> I hope I've answered oh, your questions. And he's a very diligent resident. He's <laughs> speaking everywhere, online, in person, everywhere. I like him. Yeah, Douglas, he seems pretty smart too. Thank you for your delegation. Does any member of council have any questions? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah, that was very good. That was very, very good. It appears there's there's a few supporters. I Again, I won't be offended if you don't want to sit through the next three hours of the meeting. I'll just ask you to exit quietly if you, if you like. Moving on to our first presentation, item 5.6 now. Uh, 2022 financial statement and audit report, Lillian Chung, associate partner hmm. of Deloitte. He has to see through three hours and answering the questions and listening. Well, yeah, that's a good job. You know, it seems he's diligent at what he's doing and also seems transparent. The fact that he's willing to show the, the finances. A lot of times the mayors and the leaders are not willing to do that. Let me know what you guys think of the, the mayor of um, Ajax, Sean Collier, if he's a good guy. But yeah, I like the way that conversation went. Um, Douglas asked very, very precise questions and very, very good questions. And it seems um, the mayor knew, knew the numbers. And that's one thing important about being a leader. Imagine if he was stuttering when they asked him those questions, then he would look like a thief or he would look dishonest. But that would, I like that one. I like that one. Hopefully, the, they're able to get the things right to keep the the hike in all this increased tax and increased interest and all those things. Hopefully, they can keep it in check because it's getting crazy, you know, getting crazy. I saw a video on TikTok of this lady said she went to fill her mother's car and she took to get to the gas station thinking it was about $75 to fill the, the SUV ended up paying about 140 something dollars that's like double what she thought yes yeah, so everything is going high now and housing even worse people can't pay rent anymore people don't even think about buying houses the people who had houses are thinking of defaulting yeah Canada is too beautiful and too nice of a place to experience this 
But well, let me know what you think about that video. It's the end of this one. Smash the like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and I'll see you on the next video. Have a very wonderful day. Peace. I made this bed on my own.